What's up YouTube, how are you doing today? Chana D, your techno dad here, and in this video, I'm gonna be giving you my five month review of the Sony X800 M2 4K Blu-ray player. And we're gonna get into it right after the jump. And I'm back. Now I've had this Sony X800 M2 4K Blu-ray player for about five months, and I would recommend this, whoa, Hey, wait a second, bro. What? What happened? Yo, you weren't about to like recommend this 4K Blu-ray player, were you? Well, what do you mean? Well, you aren't gonna tell him what's wrong with it? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna get to that. But, but you were about to say you were gonna recommend this. Yeah, dude, you need to chill out, bro. Lay off the coffee a little bit, all right? I was gonna say I would recommend this to people that don't have a TV with Dolby Vision. Bro, you need to tell them what's up with this 4K player because I wouldn't recommend it. All right, so then what should I start with in your mind? Dude, Dolby Vision's all messed up. Yeah, Dolby Vision is messed up. So I was gonna recommend this to people that maybe have a Samsung TV, which doesn't have Dolby Vision, so you're good to go in that aspect, right? Yeah, okay, but what about everybody else? Well, if they have Dolby Vision on their TV and a disc that's Dolby Vision, they have to go into the menu setting and turn Dolby Vision on, which I explained in my previous video. When you turn Dolby Vision on, what happens? Oh, right, when they turn on Dolby Vision, they'll lose 3D functionality. See, look how messed up that is. Look, dude. There's a bunch of people out there that just don't care about 3D. They think it's dead. So why would I even bring it up? Because man, you have to, you have to. There's a whole load of people that love 3D. And if they're thinking about upgrading to this 4K player and they know that 3D is not here, they might skip it. Or at least they'll keep their older, you know, player that has 3D. So you just gotta tell them, man. You just gotta tell them. Okay, so what's next? You need to tell them what happened to your Dolby Vision disc. Dude, look, I'm gonna get chewed up in the comments with all these people talking about, oh dude, that was just your player and this, that, and the other. So I can't tell them that. No, you have to tell them that. Okay, I'll tell them Saving Private Ryan and Ready Player One had lip sync issues. And then when I turned Dolby Vision off, everything was fine. Are you, you happy? You happy with that? I'll just tell them that. But it's, you know, that it probably won't happen with them, you know, and they're going to come after me, bro. They're going to come after me. Look, you have to report this back to them. That's all I'm saying. What else are you going to tell them? Well, I don't know. Negative Nancy. What is it you want me to tell them next? Uh, streaming apps. Hello. Yeah, I'm not really a fan of the streaming apps either. I actually think they should have omitted this from the player. But if these people have a TV that's, you know, 2017 to 2019, they probably have better apps in the TV than in this 4K player. That's, that's true for sure. See, I told you, man, you got to tell them what's wrong with this thing. All right, all right, all right, what else? So why don't you tell them what you did in the five months? Well, I watched movies, man. Like, what else am I going to do? Okay, but what happened? Well, I ended up going back to the Oppo. Man, I just kind of prefer that player over this one. Uh, but but it is like expensive now. So, you know, it's kind of out of reach for most people. Even for me, you know, even for you. I mean, come on, man. It's like 1300 bucks. Look, you just got to tell them what happened, man. Just be truthful and be honest. Dude, I'm honest all the time. What, what are you talking about? You're the weirdo. Can I tell them anything good? Like this pretty much plays almost all of your discs like SACD, DVD audio, DVD video, standard Blu-ray, 4K Blu-ray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell them that but tell them what happened with file playback. Yeah, of course I'm gonna tell them that I had a 10 terabyte disc that was connected to the front of the USB, but after I loaded up, I think I have over four terabytes of movies, it stopped recognizing some of the movies. Now, I don't know if that was because of the, you know, big disc size or what, but there was definitely some issues there. I have no idea what that's about or how to fix it or what the cause of it was. See, man, this is the kind of stuff they want to know. Yeah, dude, I was going to say that, bro. Like, relax. Yo, man, when are you going to shoot this video anyway? I don't know. Once you get off my back about it, probably. Well, you're going to tell them what happened with those downloaded files that everybody keeps asking for? Oh, right. Yeah, they actually didn't work. Well, I was able to get 4K HDR, but no Atmos. So I don't know what was up with that. But uh, the M2TS files that I did rip when my hard drive was working properly, I was able to get 4K, HDR, and Dolby Atmos. So 
that worked. Look, bro, I know you think I'm coming down hard on you, but really, these people want to know, and it's your job to let them know exactly what happened in the time you've reviewed it. Yeah, man, but I mean, like, some of these things, like, a lot of people don't really care about, you know? And I would recommend this for people that want to get a 4K Blu-ray player that's, you know, better than an Xbox because the picture quality is better than an Xbox One X. As far as streaming is concerned, though, you know, if they had an Xbox One X, I would continue streaming on that. Or if they had an Apple TV 4K, what about the Roku Ultra? Oh, yeah. Roku Ultra or even the TV apps are probably going to give you a better streaming experience than this 4K UHD player. Again, I felt like this thing really should just be a player and not have any streaming apps altogether. All right, man, but what about the competition? Well, I mean, Sony's X800 M2 is probably the only 4K Blu-ray player that was released in 2019. So the closest competitor is last year's UBK90 from LG which you can probably get for under 200 bucks now. Uh, otherwise, it's the Panasonic UB820, which is $500. That's double the price of the Sony, so I don't know what people are gonna wanna do. What about Sony's X700 player? What about that one? Well, I'll let them know that if we're comparing that to this X800 M2, the X800 M2 is built just way better. Like, it feels like it's gonna last. It's like pretty much metal. The X700 was just plastic. So I think that's what the X800 M2's got going for it. Well, bro, I think this is gonna be one tough review. Like you, you, got, you got your work cut out for you. I, I, don't, I, I think I wanna get out of here. Yeah, man, I think you should get out of here. This video's got one brown man too many. All right, guys, so I hope you like that style of review. But if you didn't catch any of that, I would recommend this 4K Blu-ray player to anyone that wants to step it up from their Xbox One X because uh, you do get better picture quality, a little bit more pop, a little bit more 3D depth to it. I still think the whole Dolby Vision thing is lame and the apps, I think they should just get rid of them. However, if you're just using this just to play 4K discs, I think you'll be okay. You know, you'll have to go turn on Dolby Vision, you know, you'll lose 3D and you'll have to play that whole game. But if you haven't seen my video of the Wisdom Audio, like $860,000 home theater, guess what 4K player they're using? Yep. They're using the Sony X800 M2. So, I mean, if they're using it and they don't really care and they got it connected to a $47,000 Barco projector, um, I mean, it could be good enough for your home as well. But remember, it does have some issues. It's not perfect. You know, I would recommend this sort of to those that just want to, you know, boost their picture quality, you know, color contrast, 3D pop, you know, get a step above that Xbox One X or Xbox One S. So I think that's who this player is for. Of course, anybody looking in the budget range that has a Samsung TV that doesn't have Dolby Vision or 3D, so that's not a big deal. The LG UBK90, you can probably still find new and used for probably around like 100 bucks. So, I mean, it, it's really up to you guys. Again, the next step up is the Panasonic UB820, which is 500 bucks. And if you can get your hands on an Oppo for around 12 or $1,300, you're pretty lucky. Now, if you guys have any questions about this player for me, leave them down in the comments or hit me up on email or social, whatever you like to use. Well, that's pretty much it for this video. Hope you liked that new review style. And go ahead, smash that like button, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel using the button in the middle of your screen. Once again, my name is Chana D. I'm your techno dad, and I'll see you next time. Oh,